All the efforts Pope Francis has been making to stop President Obama's proposed military attack on Syria, the September 7th day of prayer and fasting for peace, the vigil that evening in St. Peter's Square, the Pope's letter to G20 leaders, and the speech his foreign minister, Archbishop Mamberti, gave to the Vatican Diplomatic Corps this week, all these actions are very much in continuity with the spirit and record of his predecessors. Many remember Pope Paul VI's dramatic speech at the United Nations in 1965 when he called for no more war, war never again. And John Paul II was a constant campaigner for peace, calling the Assisi interfaith meetings, praying for an end to violence in the Balkans, and doing everything he could, publicly and privately, to prevent the invasion of Iraq in 2003. So the figure of the Pope as peacemaker is a familiar one to people all over the world, Catholics and non-Catholics alike. But what many likely don't realize is that looking over the papacy's 2,000 year history, that peacemaker role is a relatively recent one. Popes called the Crusades, of course, and until the late 19th century, they had their own army, the last vestiges of which we can see today in the colorful uniformed Swiss guards, whose job is not to fight, but to protect the Pope. But back in the 16th century, Pope Julius II actually rode at the head of his troops, wearing full armor in battles against rival Italian rulers in France. It was only in the 20th century that the Pope emerged as a reliable voice against the very idea of war as a way of resolving international disputes. Benedict XV seriously tried to broker an end to the carnage of the First World War, and Pius XII sought through diplomatic channels to head off the second. The change reflects the vast leap in destructive power of military technology in the Industrial Age. In 1963, Pope John XXIII wrote in his encyclical Pacem in Terris that nuclear weapons had made war finally unacceptable as a way of redressing injustice. But there was another change, too, that made it easier for the popes to give up on war. Their loss of the Papal States in 1870, when the Holy See ceased to be a territorial power. Since then, the popes have not had a direct stake in any international conflict, and that neutrality has left them freer to fulfill their role as leaders of a truly universal church. <laughs>